Well, hello again, and welcome again to another podcast. Down to earth, but heavenly minded. I'm your host, Rish. Well, we've been going through this book, Waiting on God. And uh, it's a devotional, and we're in our fifth day. It's by Andrew Murray. And uh, let me just switch my screen here. And uh, I need to get to my text so we can read our our devotional for today. And like I say, we're in the fifth day. All righty. I got a hold of it here. All right, there it is. Let's start it, and we will read our text. Fifth day, waiting on God for instruction. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Teach me thy paths. Let me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the day. Psalm chapter 25 verses 4 and 5. I spoke of an army. On the point of entering an enemy's territories, answering the question as to the cause of delay, waiting for supplies. The answer might also have been, waiting for instructions, or waiting for orders. If the last dispatch had not been received, with the final orders of the commander-in-chief, the army dared not move. Even so in the Christian life, as deep as the need of waiting for supplies, is that of waiting for instructions. See how beautifully this comes out in Psalm chapter 25. The writer knew and loved God's law exceedingly, and meditated in that law day and night. But he knew that this was not enough. He knew that for the right spiritual apprehension of the truth, and for the right personal application of it to his own peculiar circumstances, he needed a direct divine teaching. The psalm has at all times been a very favorite one, because of its reiterated expression of the felt need of the divine teaching, and of the childlike confidence that that teaching would be given. Study the psalm until your heart is filled with the two thoughts the absolute need, the absolute certainty of divine guidance. And notice, then, how entirely it is in this connection that he speaks, on thee do I wait all the day. Waiting for guidance, waiting for instruction, all the day, is a very blessed part of waiting upon God. The Father in heaven is so interested in his child, and so longs to have his life at every step in his will and his love, that he is willing to keep his guidance entirely in his own hand. He knows so well that we are unable to do what is really holy and heavenly, except as he works it in us, that he means his very demands to become promises of what he will do. In watching over and leading us all the day. Not only in special difficulties and times of perplexity, but in the common course of everyday life, we may count upon him to teach us his way, and show us his path. And what is needed in us to receive this guidance? One thing, waiting for instructions, waiting on God. On thee do I wait all the day. We want in our times of prayer to give clear expression to our sense of need, and our faith in his help. We want definitely to become conscious of our ignorance as to what God's way may be, and the need of the divine light shining within us, if our way is to be as of the sun. Shining more and more unto the perfect day. And we want to wait quietly before God in prayer, until the deep, restful assurance fills us. It will be given, the meek will he guide in the way. On thee do I wait all the day. The special surrender to the divine guidance in our seasons of prayer must cultivate, and be followed up by. The habitual looking upwards all the day. As simple as it is, to one who has eyes, to walk all the day in the light of the sun. So simple and delightful can it become to a soul practiced in waiting on God, to walk all the day in the enjoyment of God's light and leading. What is needed to help us to such a life is just one thing, the real knowledge and faith of God as the one only source of wisdom and goodness, as ever ready. And longing much to be to us all that we can possibly require, yes. This is the one thing we need. If we but saw our God in his love, if we but believed that he waits to be gracious, that he waits to be our life and to work all in us, how this waiting on God would become our highest joy, the natural and spontaneous response of our hearts to his great love and glory. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Well, does your soul wait on the Lord? I know that there's a lot of times I get impatient and uh, I want to go ahead of the Lord. Uh, We are to uh, allow the Lord to lead our lives uh, in the right path, in the right direction. They think about this uh, psalm that uh, was read uh, in the modern, more uh, modern version, it would say, Show me thy way, O Lord, and teach me thy path. Teach me thy path. In other words, we want to know which way the Lord wants us to go. Lead me in the truth and teach me. 
for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Can we pray this prayer? This is really a prayer. This is acknowledging that God is going to direct your path. You know, I believe that God has, he's sovereign uh, over us and that he can direct our paths. But there's a lot of times that we want to do it our way or go our way and we're not within the uh, the sovereign will of you know God. Uh, we are in his permissive will where he allows us to do things. You know, we're, we're robots. Now, let's go back to the Garden of Eden for a minute. Uh, and I read this the other day and I thought about it. You know, there was two trees in the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. You know, there were probably other trees in the garden, but these were the only two that were really, uh, really significant. Uh, and what happened was uh, Adam did not really, uh, Adam and Eve did not really understand uh, good and evil. They didn't understand it. They weren't capable of it. And if they wanted to know if something was right or wrong, it had to be directed by God. They had to wait on the Lord. And the Lord would show them the right way to go uh, and the right thing to do. But man did not want to be dependent upon God. And that was the big sin. Uh, and the big sin was they wanted to do it their way. They wanted to understand, uh, you know, the, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They wanted to understand what was right and what was wrong. They didn't want to have to depend on God to show them. So they did it their way. Now I believe that if they would have not ate of that tree, if they would have ate of the tree of life, uh, they would have gone on forever. And... Uh, we would be in the same situation. But because of their fall, we inherit all this. We inherit that sin. We are born in sin. In sin did my mother conceive me. Well, you know, we don't want to wait on God. We want to do it our way. And I, I, I'm as guilty of this as anybody. You know, he talks about an army, uh, supplying you know for the for the needs of the people but also waiting for instructions and waiting for orders do we wait for God to lead us you know I I think of a story I heard many years ago I don't remember all the details of it but uh, it went something like this there was a older gentleman who lived alone and uh, didn't have any children or anything he was a bachelor or whatever and uh, he went by one of those uh, ready marts, you know, where you can go in and buy your milk and bread and eggs and all that stuff, kind of like a quick trip or a, uh, uh, well, whatever they are. And uh, for some reason, he bought a gallon of milk, and he does not know why he bought that milk. He says, first of all, I live all alone. I wouldn't drink a gallon. And he says, I don't really buy milk. And, and he got to thinking there was a reason that he bought that gallon of milk. And as he was driving along, and he was praying as he was driving, he just felt led to go to this one house as he was going by. And oh, he thought it was really crazy, but he just really felt deep down that uh, he needed to go to that door and give that gallon of milk to the people who lived there. And he didn't want to do it. He said it was foolish, and uh, he was just going on an impulse. Uh, but he said he finally just, he says, okay, Lord, <laughs> you know, and he went to the door, knocked on the door, and there was a man who answered the door, and he could hardly speak English, uh, and uh, he said, here, uh, here's a gallon of milk. He says, I just bought it, and uh, maybe you can use it. 
And all of a sudden, the man cried out to his wife, and his wife came. And she came right to the door, and they were both crying. And she was holding a little infant. And she says, you know, we were just in the other room praying that we needed milk for the baby. And you knocked on the door and gave us this gallon of milk. You know, I don't know uh, much about this story or where it came from. But it's things like this that God will do sometimes. And if you really feel an impulse or a leading to do something, and it, it's so strong that you uh, just do it. You know, I've heard of people standing in a grocery line and somebody didn't have enough money to pay for all their groceries. And being a Christian, they would pay the difference. Uh, lay money out uh, for a total stranger. You know, I've given money to people, uh, but I'm cautious. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that will try to swindle you. So you want to make sure if you're doing something that you're doing it, you know, for the Lord. Uh, and not to bring glory to yourself, but to bring glory to God. Well, when that fellow dropped off the milk, it wasn't his glory. God had led him to do it. I don't know how, uh, and I'm not going to question it. Uh, I'm not even going to question whether the story is true or not. But God does do things like this. And if you read missionary stories, sometimes you find uh, stories of uh, miraculous things happening that we can't explain. But God's hand, in one way or another, he's going to furnish our needs if we really cry out to him and we believe and trust him that he will answer our prayers. Sometimes he won't answer them the way we want to. Sometimes they even get answered no or later or however. But it's God's way of doing things. Wait on the Lord and he will supply your needs. And he will give you instructions. So something to think about today. As we go about our day. Remember. Don't start your day without God. Without the Lord in your life. Take him with you today. And remember. Always. Start your day off. By going into a quiet place. Alone with God. And listen to him through his word and ask him and pray to him. You'll find him. He's out here. God can be found, but in your Bible. Read about him. He will direct your path, and he will instruct you if you just wait on him. So with that said, I'm going to end our podcast. Bye for now.